Bill Carroll, Zindy 62 Media, and of course, once again, bringing back the Saturday Superlatives. And I want to talk about wide receivers. Now, you're going to hear a lot of discussion, and you should hear a lot of discussion about people like Keon Coleman and Malik Neighbors, and of course, Marvin Harrison Jr. But I'm not going to talk about them. One, we've heard a lot about them, and everybody's talking about them. But this is going to focus on some FCS wide receivers that I think have professional potential. And I'm going to start with one that I really think has a chance to be a wide receiver three, wide receiver four at the NFL level, and that's Jalen Coker. Holy Cross is a program that, for those who follow particularly like the Northeast Corridor, is consistently a solid program. Obviously, I guess their greatest notoriety came, you know, 35 or so years ago when Gordy Lockbaum made a run towards the Heisman Trophy. But Jalen Coker will not be invited to New York, at least not for that. But he has a chance to be a person who's right there in consideration for the, uh, <clears throat> I think, he has right for the Walter Payton Award, should be considered for that. He's off to a great start this so far this year. And in his last game, he had 124 yards receiving on nine catches. It's his second 100-yard game so far this season, seventh of his career. He's got size and speed, and it makes me feel smart because I put him on my all-underappreciated team watch list even before the season. Looks like he's going to be has a good chance to be a starter on that. And once again, I think he could be a wide receiver four or even three, perhaps, in the right situation. I'm going to go now to a South Carolina transfer who found with the Jackson State and stayed at Jackson State, and that's Rico Powers. Rico is listed at 6'2", 187. He's probably a legitimate 6'1", and 3'8", and probably about 184 pounds. But he'll get heavier, you know, as he physically develops. He's had a bunch of good games and then one. Not so great game. His last game against Texas State got held in check with only two receptions for 19 yards. But prior to that, he had four catches and 95 yards against a very good South Carolina State team. Then came back with four catches for 119 yards against Florida A&M and a touchdown. Then a touchdown and three catches and 76 yards for Southern. He's going to be an all-conference receiver this year. And someone I hope to see it may be the Shrine game. If he tests well, he has a chance to be drafted late. I'm going to talk about a player that has no chance to be drafted. Doesn't mean he can't play in the NFL, though. <coughs> um, Matthew Poshaka is from Prasaska, um, is from uh, Denver, California. Found his way all the way to Bryant. Uh, and was a player that, you know, clearly they didn't know what they had for a while because he didn't play much his first three years there. Only had 248 or so yards receiving at the end of his first three years. Well, he's breaking out this year, and I can think the arrows pointed upwards on him. Had two catches for 40, for 81 yards. Well, that's 40.5 yards per reception. Get the ball to him more. Against UNLV, so they're playing up level competition. Unless LIU, uh, two for 64, and then had his first touchdown of the season. Six catches, 112 yards against Brown University, including a long of 38. He's also at a 32 and a 76 yard so far this year. So he's not a burner in the conventional sense, but he's good with the ball in his hands. And he's undersized. He's probably about 5'10. He's probably about 161 pounds. But he's really worth watching. A bigger receiver, more of a bigger body receiver, is Matthew Stanch. And he's at Maris, a Red Fox. He's had a monster game against Davidson. Uh, sort of came from, I'm going to say out of nowhere, but he. You know, he didn't do that much against Georgetown, three receptions, 28 yards. But you can see really what he is. He had a 68-yard reception, two touchdowns, four catches for 161 yards. And they just couldn't do anything with him against Davidson. Davidson's not exactly a powerhouse, but they're not a bad program either. I think this is a taste of things to come for him. Another FCS receiver that I think probably has a chance to make it, mostly as like a, once again, a, a wide receiver four or five, is Katero Summers, a bigger-bodied guy. About six two and a half, about 112 pounds. Sorry, 112, 212 pounds, and a guy who started out at St. Francis transferred to the Rams of Rhode Island, and he has been a problem since he's gotten there against a very good Bain team, which has a very solid secondary. He still was a problem. Uh, he had seven receptions to begin the year for 99 yards against Georgia State. So that's going once again up in competition against an FBS team. Then he comes back with three receptions for 103 yards against Stony Brook. And then his 
P.S. The results was against Maine. Once again, a good team. Six receptions, 130 yards, two touchdowns. And while he's not a burner in the conventional sense, he's a guy that pulls away from people with long strides. So once you get him going, you know, he can be a problem. And I think that when you think about, you know, some of the guys that you've seen that, you know, like Amani Toomer, right? Some of those guys who are possession plus is what they call it. Uh, he's a guy that you may think of as a possession receiver, has the ability to do a little bit more once he has the ball in his hands and can run away once he gets up to speed. Those are some of my Saturday Superlatives with the FCS focus on wide receivers. I'm going to talk about, you know, the big boys. Uh, offensive defensive line is up next.